But for me, I was like two hours and like that's like what we can make in yeah. two hours. I was so Welcome to episode three, the Black is the New Rich podcast. I'm your host, Corey Cash. And today we got a very special guest I've known over 20 years. We went to the same high school together. We both played basketball, so we're in the same community. Um, I respect this person at a very, very high level because they went through a lot in life, um, through the ups and the downs. And to what they're doing now, uh, it's like it's admirable. So, um, yeah, introduce yourself. I mean, you, you, you've said plenty, uh, you know, Toot Raj, like, you know, like you said, we've known each other for 20 years, dating back to the glory days of Father Michael Gates, um, you know, former basketball player, now uh, current real estate agent, investor, developer. Dope, dope. And when did you get into the real estate game? Like, how long has it been? Um, I mean, how I how I got into it was when I was hooping overseas, I knew that I wanted to do something. I knew I had to do something mm. after playing basketball. Mm -hmm. I, I had numerous teammates that we'd be How playing overseas. You? When I started thinking about real estate, yeah, no, yeah. I want to say 26. Oh, shoot. Yeah, 26. Because I would have so many teammates that we'd be playing and like basketball was everything for us. Like, you, yeah. you know how it is when you're yeah. an athlete, right? That's, you're so focused on the it's goal. Tunnel vision. But then I would see, I was young at the time. I had, you know, just me and my fiance, my now wife, no kids. No obligations. I could, I was free to, you know, chase whatever I needed to chase. I had teammates that had kids that, you know, relied on them as basketball players to provide everything, mm -hmm. not only for their kids, but also their wife as well. Mm -hmm. And I would see teams cut these guys like it was nothing. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, whoa, like, you know, it can end like that mm -hmm. for you in a day. So I was like, I, you know, I need a, a backup plan, you know, if and when basketball isn't working for me anymore. So... Every time I would come back from overseas in the summer, I'd be in touch with people trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, you know, post basketball. I knew like plenty of skills, but like where do I want to focus those skills? And, you know, one of my one of my good friends, Sham, he was in real estate for a long time. His parents have been in real estate and he just took me out to dinner one time. He's like, Hey, I want you to come like down to Kingston with me. I'm selling this new development project. Come help me sell that. I said, mm -hmm. <laughs> How old were you at this time? <sighs> 29. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, 29, I think, roughly. Mm -hmm. um, he said, yo, just come down, help me sell this project. I said, what do you mean, help you sell? He said, like, be yourself. Here's what we're going to sell. You help me sell it. Yeah. And he's like, you know, we'll go to the hotel. We'll go out. Whatever. I'm like, all right, cool. I had nothing going on anyways. I was like, free weekend, whatever. Yeah. So we went down. You know, he did all the marketing and everything. I was just like, cool, going for the ride. So we had like 10 people in a room. We rented like a hotel. Um banquet hall for like two hours mm -hmm. he rented it 10 people came through you know i was like aware of the floor plans and stuff kind of had the rundown of of the of the development so you know people are sitting in there they're asking questions like oh where's this i was like oh that's that floor plan that's this boom whatever you know hour and a half goes by like i'm just talking to people right we end up closing like i think it's like four deals that day four deals your first time I, you don't even know. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just helping, right? I'm yeah. like, yeah, here's this floor plan. Here's this. Then he would, like, they'd be in. They'd be like, okay, like, you know, let's go sign or whatever. So I, at time, I don't know what sign means. Mm -hmm. Completely oblivious yeah. to what's going on. He's just like, can you help me? I need, like, someone I can trust. So ends up signing, like, four deals. And then he shows me, like, the amount on the four deals. And I was like, for two hours? Obviously, it didn't take two hours, right? He's been putting in time, yeah, 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 yeah. marking it all. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. for me, I was like two hours and like that's like what we can make in yeah. two hours. I was sold. As a no, as a no brainer. I was sold. I was sold. So you're 29 years old. I remember the time uh, you were playing for. And mind you, he didn't. Sorry to cut yeah, you off. Ahead. At the time, he didn't tell me like he was going to give me any of the money. He just yeah. said, yo, come down and help me. He ended there up was giving no, you money. Yeah. He oh, paid me. Yeah. <laughs> like, and not like he didn't pay me like an hourly fee. He paid me a percentage, oh, a wow. very high percentage of what he sold. Wow. So I was like, I can okay. get used to this. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, that's more money that I've ever made in two hours ever in my life. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it was, it was a no brainer. I feel at the time, um, I remember the time where you transitioned to become a, a real estate agent. I felt like you had a lot of basketball left in you still. I, I definitely did. Definitely. What, like, what was that thought process like? Because you're still like in your prime. 
for me, it was more like control of my destiny. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'd seen so many guys have their destiny controlled for them and like their experience ended when they weren't ready to have it ended. Yeah. I knew I had, I, I had plenty, plenty of basketball. Of basketball. You could still be playing now if you- I probably could still be playing right now, 100%. I agree with you. But at the same time, I was like, you know, you're always like one freak injury away from, you know, being not being able to still play now. Yeah. So I, that, that was always in my mind, like, okay, what if the worst happens, you know, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. Do I have something to fall back on? Mm -hmm. At the time I, you know, aside from my now, what, like I didn't, what else am I going to fall back on? Yeah. I mean, I have my education, all that, like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a graduate of university, but I didn't actually have like a plan. Yeah. And this was like, this is a plan for me. I I, I can see myself doing this. Like nothing's going to take this away from me. I yeah. can control this. Yeah. And you control your own time, your own, your own work ethic yeah. and stuff like that. So it's kind of, it was, it's, it sounds like it was security for you. Yeah. I mean, it's, it was security, but also like I had the opportunity to pursue what I wanted to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, did I, did I get to You're level in basketball? Yeah, did I get to level in basketball that I wanted to be at, mm -hmm. like in the NBA? No, I didn't reach that level. Mm -hmm. But I had the chance to try to get there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, can I say, oh, you know, I didn't get there for X, Y, Z reasons? Sure, I can. But at the end of the day, I had an opportunity, you know, to make that happen. Mm -hmm. I didn't make it happen mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I didn't make it happen. So I was like, I was happy that, okay, I've given myself this chance. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable mm -hmm. stepping away from that mm -hmm. because I gave myself terms. that chance mm, correct okay i get it okay dope so now you're in real real estate yeah and we always hear when well we're in toronto the gta we always hear the market is crazy it's is it a buyer's market is it a seller's market so what is it right now and what do those terms even mean it depends the side you're on um for the buyers and sellers and what's yeah, no, crazy no, I, no i know i know because i mean we're basically seeing like unprecedented over, you know, I haven't been in it, the real estate market that long, but you know, I like to look at history. Mm -hmm. We're seeing unprecedented growth in prices yeah. across the GTA. Mm -hmm. So that's not a buyer's market. It's a seller's market. Yeah. But, and this is what I try to tell people sometimes, if you try to play the waiting game of like, I'm going to wait till it's a buyer's market, mm -hmm. you might wait too long. And it's just going to keep going up. It's going to keep going up. And it may plateau for a bit, but then are you hopping in that plateau or are you waiting for like a decrease? Uh, so in my opinion, the only time I've seen an actual buyer's market, and it wasn't even for the whole market, it was for condos downtown during COVID. Yeah. Because as I've told clients that I have, right, it's just, it's like the easiest investment in a GTA. Yeah. You buy a pre-construction condo, you can't go wrong. Yeah. You bought it for 400000 By the time you sell, it's going to be worth five hundred. Whatever. Yeah. It's always a quick flip. But I would always tell my clients, hey, these one-bedroom condos downtown, they work right now because the economy is booming. Mm -hmm. The people that actually rent them have good paying jobs. Restaurants are flowing. Mm -hmm. Events are flowing. They can afford it if, for whatever happens, and this is pre-COVID, I was telling them this. Yeah. If something happens where they are unable to afford your one bedroom rent, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know, at, at best you're gonna have two people in there, mm -hmm. right? It could be one person, mm -hmm. might be a couple, maybe they have a kid, but you're gonna have two people at best paying mm -hmm. for that mortgage. Mm -hmm. If something happens with the economy down there, who are you renting that place to? Yeah, and your mortgage is still what your mortgage yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it looks good on paper, but in reality, if anything ever happens your asset class is the, the first one that's going to be like in trouble. Mm -hmm. So they'd say, all right, like, well, what should I get into? I'd say like, if you can, right. Cause not everybody can, if you can, you want like a, a family home. Mm -hmm. Families always need a home. Mm -hmm. Always. Mm -hmm. If it's not a family, you mm -hmm. can put multiple people into mm -hmm. the house because mm -hmm. they're separate bedrooms. Right. Mm -hmm. Is it ideal at the current moment? No, but it's at least a feasible option. Mm -hmm. That you can maintain like a cash flow mm -hmm. if you have an investment property. Okay, dope. Um, for first time home buyers, I hear about like the five percent, the twenty percent. What is how does this first time home buyer system work down here? So, so the reason they implemented it is because a lot of people make enough money to pay a mortgage. The issue yes, is the down payment. The down payment. Yeah. 
So when they implement, you know, the, the first time home buyers plan, the government is going to give you a portion of your of that down payment. And for giving you that, they just want it if and when you sell. So it, it, it's purely a numbers thing. Some people are just against it because they don't want to be get, we'll put it into simple terms. If you had a $500,000 condo mm -hmm. and you know you got 5% of it, you got a 5% down payment. That would be 25K. So do you have to make up the 15% when you sell? Does that make sense? No, say? not up to $500,000. Okay. After five hundred thousand dollars, your the required down payment increases incrementally. Okay. And once you hit a million, it's now like twenty percent you need. When you sell. When you buy. When you buy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you only have up to so five hundred thousand dollars. You, you can, can get that. Pay five percent. So what happens when you sell? What do they get back? They get back what they gave you. Just the five, but at the if they gave you five percent, they get. Yeah. 5% of your sale price. So so that's how they make their money. That's how they make their money back. So they have skin in the game with you. Mm, so what do you Right? Mean? So for some people, they'll look and be like, well, I got 25K and now when I sell for a million dollars, they want 50K, like that's double. But you, you know. just made way more too. Correct. So that 5% can be very beneficial depending on your situation. Correct. And let's say you don't want to do the 5% stuff. Um, what is a good um, like what is a good percentage of a down payment that you should have? I mean, in the GTA, the down payments are so high. Yeah. So in my opinion, obviously 20 is the ideal amount because then you save on mortgage insurance, which oh, can true. be like, you know, you know, over ten thousand dollars easily, oh, right? Mm -hmm. You save on that. So if you can get to 20%, you get lower rates. It gives you you can also extend your amortization period. Yeah. So your monthly payment is cheaper. Yeah. Whereas if you only have five percent, you can only you can only get a twenty five year mortgage max. Mm -hmm. If you have twenty percent, you can do thirty years. Mm -hmm. So your monthlies are lower. So as an investor, twenty percent down, lower monthly, you can make more money. Uh, it works more. Interesting, interesting. But for but for like, say I'm buying my, say I'm buying my first home. Yeah. And you know I can get five percent. It makes no sense. Really, in my opinion, mm -hmm. for you to put down ten percent, yeah, just take which the is five. another, yeah, which is like let's say on five hundred k, that's another twenty five k. Mm -hmm. How much does that save you per month? It might be like two hundred bucks, mm -hmm. three hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, it's worth it. Just take the five percent. You still have to pay the mortgage insurance. Mm -hmm. Keep that twenty five k for whatever else you may need it for. Mm -hmm. And if it's if you're only gonna save you know two three hundred bucks a month. Again, this is off the top of my head. Yeah. I don't have a calculator in front of me. Yeah. This is all freebie. You can invest that and make more than that. Yeah. And then see better return that way. Okay, dope. Here's a concept that I was thinking. If I was like in a relationship, right? And me and my partner didn't live in the same house and we were we weren't married yet. I was thinking, well, if we plan, like if we're serious and we plan to take that step, like why don't like I use my 5% and you use your 5%? Is that a, is that a, is that a you hustle? You mean for two, for, for two, two separate different homes. properties? Yeah. Of course you could do that. I think that would be, that's, a, that's, a, good, that's that. a good game plan. Of course you could do that. Yeah. I mean, that's the first time I've heard that. But yeah, that's smart. Why not? Yeah, because now that's what I was thinking. That's what I like, I was thinking about that last night. I want to ask you because that. if you guys officially like live together, mm -hmm. you, that's like now one house, two homes. No, it's now one. So you can only use the five percent one time. Yeah, yeah. So you right? couldn't do that. Yeah. But before, just before, we're about to let's say, and I don't want to talk about like real estate law because yeah, yeah, yeah again, yeah. like I again, and even in real estate, like I'll always refer my clients and stuff to like. A real estate lawyer, a mortgage, like I don't like speaking for their area of expertise. Okay, fair, you know what fair, I mean? fair, fair, fair. But yeah, if you if you guys don't live together and you're doing it separate, you can yeah. actually have both properties separate. Then when you do live together, yeah. you're good. You still have both separate. Okay. So you now like you know play yeah. the loophole. That's yeah, that's smart. Okay, dope. And as far as credit and credit score, what type of credit scores um, is doable to like get a home? Like what type, what are you looking at? It. It's not only the credit score, right? So I, I deal with a few mortgage brokers closely. Mm -hmm. It's everything. That's just like one part of it. What what is the what else is included that you know? You know, like so your credit score can be 
whatever number it is, but mm -hmm. they're going to look at your whole financial profile. Why is your credit score what it is, whether that's high or low? Okay. Right? Because you can be in a different place financially than your credit score indicates. Oh, true. Right? So I've had clients that have low credit scores, but mm -hmm. they're in a financial place that if you saw their score, it looks completely different than where they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so they can have a lot of money or a lot correct. of assets. Making a lot of money, making better money. Their credit issues are from way back when they were younger. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that go into it. So it's oh. not just the score. So this is why I always advise people like go see a professional mortgage broker. Oh, okay. And like actually give them the legitimate rundown because that makes their job easier. Because okay. you might think you're in a bad situation, but you're actually in a better situation yeah, than you yeah. think. Don't it could also be vice versa. You, yeah. could, you might think you're in a better situation than you are. Mm -hmm. And you might be in a worse situation. So like tell the truth. Tell Don't the truth. try to outsmart the outthink the room. Okay, okay. You know? And as far as um I hear terms like uh A lender or B lender, yeah. like what are those what are those about and what are the pros and cons to each if there's any? No, so A lenders are gonna give you lower interest rates, mm -hmm. better rates. Mm -hmm. And that's that makes a world of a difference, right? And that leads into I know we've discussed this before, like the stress test. So mm -hmm. if you're at an A lender, let's say right now. And this is why it's like great to get into real estate now. We have some of the lowest interest rates we've ever seen, mm -hmm. right? Which means your buying power is more. Mm -hmm. So with an A lender, you can get a rate, you know, we've had them as low as like, they're like in between one and 2%. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. The exact same person, if you go to a B lender, your rate's going to be, you know, between two and three, two and 4%, mm -hmm. which makes a significant difference on a monthly basis okay. for your payments. Okay. That's the difference between an A lender and a B lender. Okay. And you know, A lending and B lending doesn't necessarily mean you make more or less money than somebody else. It's literally like, is the bank willing to loan you money because you know you've shown them that you might not pay on time all the time in the past, or for what whatever reason it is. Yeah. Like they're not gonna give you their A rate you have to go to a b lender oh okay which the b lender will be like okay we'll look past that but here's our price for looking past that and, and it'll be a little more. bit more so it's situational obviously. exactly okay cool exactly and you just mentioned stress tests can you I, I personally like what is that about what is it so basically so say say our interest rate right now is one percent yeah the stress test is gonna increase the interest rate whatever amount they increase it mm -hmm. to see if you're the money that you make and what you're bringing in monthly can mm -hmm. still maintain a certain debt ratio. Okay. So your stress test is about your income. Yes. Okay. For the most part, but it's not just the income. It's like your debt ratio. So banks, lenders have a debt ratio that you have to be below uh -huh. before they like flag it. Like he's paying, he or she is paying too much mm -hmm. in mortgage mm -hmm. and expenses for this to be like viable long term. Oh, true, if it's true. over that limit, we don't want to lend to them because if anything goes wrong, like, you know, it's gonna be sticky for us. So maintain like if you can if you can pay all that mm -hmm. and stay under that ratio, mm -hmm. we're good. So the stress test tries to bring you up. Oh. And if you go past the stress, like if you go past that ratio, you know it's red flag for them. Okay. If you stay under, you're blessed. You're good. And I hear like if you're within like a year um, and you're thinking about purchasing a home, like, uh, sorry, financing a car kind of, will kind of hurt you and stuff like that. Definitely. Because yeah. that goes directly into your debt. It's, it's called debt service and ratio, that right? that your stress test. Say your, yes, 100%. Say your mortgage is $2,000 a month. Mm -hmm. You get a new car, mm -hmm. finance, lease, whatever, and that costs you $700 a month. Mm -hmm. That's almost... 50% of the cost of your mortgage, mm -hmm. right? So they're like, wait, you already have to pay this car note plus this mortgage. Mm -hmm. If you remove that car note, you can now pay that clean. It's always advisable to buy your vehicle after, lease your vehicle after. Yeah. 100%. 100%. And, and now, like, uh, in the time that we are in, we're seeing a lot more entrepreneurs working for themselves. But I'm hearing that's a little bit harder to get or to purchase property as an entrepreneur. How can entrepreneurs um, get around that? Or should they still maybe keep their nine to five? Like, how does that work? It's not necessarily that it's harder for entrepreneurs to buy property. The issue that I see personally, mm -hmm. like anecdotally, mm -hmm. is that there are entrepreneurs, 
they don't want to claim the money Everything. they've made. Oh, okay. Right? Mm -hmm. That's therein lies the issue. Mm -hmm. You can make a ton of money. Yeah. But when it comes time to show where you've made the money from, if you can't, then nobody wants to give you a, a loan. That's a red flag. Right? It makes it much harder. I mean, you can still get it, makes it much harder. Uh, so if you, you know, if you do plan on getting something, it's advisable to start putting stuff on paper if that's your actual goal. Okay. Because now you can say, hey, look, this is what I made. It's on paper. It's on paper. Here it is. Okay, that's what you make. Here's what we'll give you. Yeah. Once you get it, then you can go do whatever. I mean, I'm not giving anybody advice, but then you know it's a different ball game because you mm -hmm. already have yeah the mortgage now. Okay. Understood. Understood. And okay, so for the so for the investor right now, how can we make money in real estate right now? Is it like commercial units? It's it, is it multifamily homes? Is it Airbnb? Is it condo flipping from because you mentioned pre-sales? What is it? It depends on like each investor because everybody has different things. Like when when you say the term like, you know, what's good for investors, mm -hmm. investors all have different ideas of what they think is a good investment. Mm -hmm. So for example, what you like as an investment, I might not like as an investment. Mm -hmm. What I like, you might not like. Mm -hmm. So there's multiple ways you can still invest. The key you know, fr from the simplest standpoint of just owning real estate yeah. right now is getting in, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah. Um, you know, as, as you grow, as you, as you have more capital, mm -hmm. multifamily is always a sound investment, in my opinion, mm -hmm. as long as you're not buying like at the super, super top yeah. of any market, which is always hard to predict. Yeah. Always hard to predict. Right. So it's easy for me to say, don't buy at the top. Yeah. When I'm telling you to get in right now, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then in like three months, you're gonna come back and be like, "Oh, that house we looked at is now like worth 50k more." Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. In the GTA, it's crazy. Um, multifamily, like again, it depends on who's investing. Is this mm. a single person? Is it a conglomerate of people? Yeah. Like it, you know, the investments change based on who's investing. Okay, so um, what do you value when it comes to that? So my wife's a designer. Yeah. So I have a background in contracting as mm. well. So for me, I like flipping mm. because we like we literally have every ooh, my bad, <laughs> we have everything in house. Yeah. Like we know contractors. We know what it costs to do things. We know save money on replacing that. Yeah. Use it over here. Oh, so I'm you guys a realtor, are well. so I know what's going to bring back more value. Yeah. So from, and I enjoy, we enjoy doing that anyways. Yeah. Um, so for me, that's what I like. If I had more capital, then it would be completely different. Mm -hmm. I'd be looking at completely different investments. Okay. So let's say like you have more capital, like what, what would you be eyeing right now? I mean, there's a reason like you see cranes all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. take this little, this little square of land and then you can build 30 stories up yeah. and sell each unit at a thousand dollars a square feet. Jeez. Yeah. That's yeah. A lot that's of money. big money. That's, that's a lot big of money. money. Okay. Dope. So in the GTA, right? I feel like, oh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like there's an influx of real estate agents, right? There's, there's tons right now. How do you stay afloat and how do you like, what's your marketing game when it comes to like getting clients or, you know, stuff like that? I mean, mainly, mainly word of mouth, mm -hmm. um, providing lots of information, yeah, valuable information, truthful information, mm -hmm. because you know sometimes I'll, like I'll have clients hit me and be like, "Hey, I heard X, Y, and Z," and I'm mm -hmm. like, "Nah, like that's not the way it works. That's yeah. not how it works." Okay, maybe this part was right. Mm -hmm. That's why I always try to catch myself. I'm like, "Hey, like I don't want to speak on that because yeah. it's not my expertise." Yeah. So it's being fully transparent. Fully transparent, man. Fully transparent. Um, and they pass your name when you, they have a good situation. They'll pass it on to a family member, and then just yeah. And then and and then even dealing with clients, like mm -hmm. you know, just trying to treat them and mm -hmm. their property yeah. as good as possible. Yeah. Like trying to temper expectations. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah, I mean, being on top of things, like being knowledgeable of the market as well. Yeah. Because depending on where you are in the GTA, depending on your property, like yeah. you can hear, oh, like prices are going through the roof, but like the property you have and where it is, that doesn't apply to you. Uh, so like 
tempering that expectation of, well, you know, a house around the corner just sold for X amount. But yeah, like even though your property's in the same neighborhood, it's not the same kind of property. Mm -hmm. You can't expect that return. Sometimes mm -hmm. people don't like to hear that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And they'll yeah. shop elsewhere and then, you know, a month or two goes by and then they call you back like, yeah. hey, so you were saying, you're, right? You're right. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, just off camera, uh, you and Damien, you guys were talking about um, – like your your real estate career like i'm you just there's a word that you said like i'm i don't pigeonhole myself because you do multiple yeah, what was yeah. that again yeah no so i do you know residential is the bulk of it but mm -hmm. we've also established a group at forest hill where like i said you said what's like the best investment if you had capital that's yeah. literally what we look for yeah is you know land acquisition develop the land and try mm -hmm. to bring it to its best and highest use as we would say mm -hmm. in real estate mm -hmm. And, you know, when I was getting into real estate, people would always tell me, like, don't, like, pick a niche. Like, you know, be great at a niche. But I was always like... Why? Why? <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, telling someone to play basketball and be like, just dribble. Yeah, or yeah. Or just, like, why only do one? Why can't yeah. I do all of them? Yeah. You know? So you're into... Uh, what are the terms? Residential, real estate? Residential and commercial. And commercial. Yeah. yeah. Okay, then that works for you. Yeah. I mean, obviously, obviously they are very different so it's not like you can just jump into commercial real estate okay like because they they use different terms they use different parameters they go about things a different way okay but you know both yes but it's you know like you have to actively learn mm -hmm. how they operate mm -hmm. it's not like you know a and a yeah it's yeah, like yeah. a and b mm -hmm. so you actually have to learn yeah what they do from people that do what they do full time yeah and then when you get there, then that's when the value comes of seeing both or doing Correct. both. Yeah. Okay, dope. Shoot, that was a lot of good information. So to wrap it up, I ask everybody the same three questions. And I'm gonna ask <laughs> you, uh, I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna start with this one. What is the best advice that you've gotten? And what's the worst advice that you've ever gotten? <sighs> the best advice I've ever gotten. <sighs> <laughs> okay, I'm, try, I'm trying to think through both yeah, best yeah, and yeah, worst. Yeah, no, you're good. Um, man, it could even be sometimes through family, like when they're like, "Ah, oh, do this," but you're like, "Ah, oh, no." No, I know. I'm just thinking in my head, like nothing, like bang stands out to yeah. me of like no, or great that's cool advice, or, because I think the greatest advice is like it's the most basic advice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like nothing crazy. It's like a believe in yourself b do your due diligence yeah if you you know if you're going to actually try to do something like yeah. give your all to it yeah that's the simplest advice we've heard that forever but those are the basics to life that's what i'm saying it's yeah. like so basic yeah the worst advice i've ever heard is probably don't try that it's not for you that's by far the worst advice. And that goes into the residential and... Just in general, like, when, you know, you, you can bring something up to somebody like, hey, I'm, you know, I want to try this. And they say like, nah, like it's not for you. Don't try it. Like, yeah. that's the worst advice you can give somebody. Yeah. Why would you say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the worst thing that Dream happens killers. if you... What's the worst thing that happens if you try it? You fail? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with failing? That's a learning You can experience. only... Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, you only get better through failure if your mindset is like, if I fail... I only learn from it because yeah. then I won't fail the same way again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, that's why I said like it. Like no specific person ever jumps out to me when I think of that. But in general, hearing people say things like like "Don't try that," you yeah, know, it's not, for, not you. for you. I don't know. You're too old. You're too young. Mm -hmm. Just like the general like negativity of things. That's probably mm -hmm. like the worst advice you can give most people. Okay, dope. And I like to, or no, we like to make predictions on this show. So if it, when, when it, no, when it happens, I want to play this back and I want you to see it. So <laughs> where do you see yourself in the next five years? Whew, in the next five years, um, you will see that we flipped a few properties. Mm -hmm. You you uh might see us on tv yeah okay um and you might see me have my own brokerage okay to rock. Yeah. thank you thank you so much that was shit that was that was great hey man like, like i said yo i could we could do this yeah, for like all day. two more hours yeah, all day. easy bro jeez easy. thank easy. you so much that was a lot of great information especially because i want to know a lot about the home buying process and i feel like 
you know what? Why not have a podcast and then share yeah. it with the rest of everybody too, right? Thank you. Appreciate it. I mean, if you're watching too, hit me up. My, oh, yeah. My, Sorry, yeah. My Give details will be in the contact. Uh, to my own horn. Yeah, best name on IG and okay. Twitter. Everything black on black. Everything black on black. Nigga, if I studied that facts on facts.